Hello, in this second of four talks on the Kermit area product, uh, now that in the first talk I explained what it is, now I want to give you an idea of what kind of values you should expect to encounter in interventional radiology. Uh, so the Kermit area product, let me remind you, it's the number that you see and is presented to you on the monitor. Or if you're using Siemens equipment, then remember that Siemens likes to use microgray meter squared. I've no idea why. I like to think in terms of gray centimeter squared. Why? Because in radiography, it's typically one. In GIGU, it's typically 10. And in interventional radiology, it's typically 100. So to get from these microgray meter squared to gray centimeter squared, that people like me can understand, you simply divide by 100. And here is a dose summary sheet that Eric Hoffer kindly forwarded to me. Here is one of many runs. And you can see that the Kerma area product is just under one uh, gray centimeter squared, nearly 100 microgray meter squared. Uh, from the 33 minutes of fluoroscopy, it's nearly 51 gray centimeter squared, or 5,000 of these microgray uh, meter squared. And if you add the uh, uh, digital runs to the fluoroscopy, you end up with this number here, 55, uh, 56 uh, gray uh, centimeter squared, or nearly 56,000 microgray meter squared. So if we take the average value, uh, this is from a publication, you're looking typically at numbers of 100, 200, 300. So these were average values of 35 procedures are listed by uh, Don uh, Miller and Stephen Bolter and their colleagues in the JVIR way back in 2003. Never mind that it's a rather old uh, publication. It really gives you an incredible amount of very valuable data and one that I personally rely on a lot. So to give you an idea, a low dose exam might be dealing with a nephrostomy obstruction. The median value might be a couple of hundred gray centimeter squared. And AVM embolizations of the spine here would be an example of a high dose procedure, 600 gray centimeters squared. Uh, the mean patient value is 200 gray centimeters squared. The 25th percentile is about 100 and the 75th percentile is 300. So you've got a pretty good idea when you look at your own individual case and you should say the median value should be like 200 and uh, 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 half my patients should fall between 100 and 300 and obviously a quarter will be less than 100 and a quarter will be more than 300. What is the most likely fraction attributed to fluoro? Um, uh, it's a very crude number, but if all I have is the uh, fluoroscopy time, then my answer is, on average, I would expect a third to arise from fluoroscopy and two thirds from the digital imaging. Is it a good rule of thumb? No, it's terrible but it's the best that I could actually uh, come up with. And my point here is don't just look at the fluoro time if you want to know what your patient's being exposed to. Look at the Kerma area product and you will get the full picture. So the Kerma area product versus fluoro time is really a, a terrible way of uh, taking care of your patients. It's a very limited value. Uh, we have uh, really important numbers, IRP air coma that should go into your patient's chart and I can use to estimate the skin dose and the skin risk and the coma area product that again should go into your chart and I can use that number to estimate organ doses, effective doses and with patient demographic data, any possible cancer radiation risk. And again, these really 
do need to be documented. Uh, I will just say that the uh, peak skin dose is the number that you want for the uh, irradiation burn risk and the Kerma area product, also known as the dose area product, is something that I can use to give you a reasonable estimate of any possible cancer risk. If anybody uh, is interested, uh, just drop me an email. I'll be more than happy to explain what the numbers are and how I got them. So that's uh, Kerma area product in interventional radiology. Questions, comments, concerns, drop me an email at walterhuda at hotmail.com and I'll be more than happy uh, to discuss these issues with you.